or I'd roll it. Welcome to the B-Movie Rollout, a place where we take a look at cheesy, low-budget action movies from the 1980s and remember why we left them there in the first place. In the first two episodes of this season, we looked at one type of B-movies, bad sequels of good movies. Today, we'll look at another type, bad knockoffs of good movies. Knockoffs come in various forms. On one end of the spectrum, there are the works of Bruno Mattei or The Modern Day Asylum, which are simply rip-offs that blatantly steal scenes from more successful films to improve their own, and on the other end of the spectrum are the works of George Lucas and Quentin Tarantino, which take inspiration from elements in earlier films and use it to craft an original story. The stuff I like is somewhere in between. For instance, something made by Canon Films is a safe bet to be somewhere between paying homage to an earlier film and simply stealing from it. Like I've discussed before, Missing in Action is a Rambo knockoff. Or how about Cobra, which borrows more than a little from the Dirty Harry series. The Vindicator was distributed by a company called Key Video, which, like Canon, was a B-movie factory. The more famous of their work was The Treasure at Sierra Madre, The Legend of Billie Jean, and Zardoz. That's right, Zardoz was of their better work. The rest of their library is stuff like the Daring Dobermans, Dark Knight of the Scarecrow, Killer Fish, or What Do You Say to a Naked Lady? I think this movie is awful. Will I be vindicated? Let's find out. I give you The Vindicator. Roll it! The title credits are as low-budget 80s as you can get, as we see one of the characters is named Frankenstein. What? <laughs> Boy, God. Speaking of monsters, the credits show some more familiar names. Andre Link and John Dunning. Those are the guys that made the Snake Eater movies. Do shit stink? Oh, I don't know. Do Link and Dunning make terrible movies? The movie begins, and I'm not kidding, in the primate room. Maybe this is like a behind-the-scenes featurette where you get to see where the movie was written. Make him clap his hands. Uh, stick out his tongue. Cross his arm. Say something dumb. Take your stinking hands off me, you damn dirty human! Oh, that fucking movie. Um, I'm sorry. Let's stick to the task at hand here. What this scene shows us is that these scientists have invented a device that can control a monkey's every move, as well as trigger a violent reaction whenever the monkey is threatened. We are going to use that clip a lot today. Got a lot more work to do. Come on, come on, get to it. Wait, was that a boom mic? What the hell? Some horrible exposition introduces us to our hero, Carl, and his wife. And he took three of my prototype chips before I had the chance to test them. And every time I try to talk to him about it, he avoids me or he comes up with some kind of stupid excuse. I don't know what's wrong with that man. You know, any lab in the country would be happy to have you. Yeah, well, I'm going in there tomorrow morning, and I'm not going to take no for an answer. Carl goes to the lab he works at and confronts his boss, Alex White, about White's misuse of research funds. White assures Carl everything is okay and sends him to his office. White then has the rest of the employees evacuate and sets the reactor core to overheat or something. The reactor blows, killing Carl. Way to talk about your old colleague, Carl Lehman. What? Carl Lehman? What are you talking about, Carl Lehman? We are preserving the brain in an oxygenating solution. Hmm, I know about that. Some sort of a um, Japanese concoction, isn't it? That's the stuff. 
White blood. Oh, they must have that thing from RoboCop 2. White then reveals his plan to revive Carl and attach him to the device that was being tested on the monkeys at the start of the film. Our experiment will be known as Project Frankenstein. Oh, okay, I get it now. This film is supposed to be like a modern-day retelling of the Frankenstein story. Bad. In fact, the film's original title was Frankenstein 88, which is weird because the film came out in 1986. By connecting his brain to the computer, he will be able to control the movements of the suit. The operation is not a success, so one of the scientists removes the piece that controls Carl for diagnostics. Then Carl wakes up and releases the lab monkeys, which attack and kill the scientist. Carl escapes in a garbage truck. Incidentally, I believe that's where I found this VHS. Screw you! Alright, listen, we've got to find him fast. If someone touches him, anyone, his onboard computer will take over. And he'll kill. Really? You put a device that triggers a lethal response on this guy? With no contingency plan whatsoever? Nice plan. In fact, perhaps the nicest plan. Carl goes to the Halloween 3 mask company and he has a bit of a freak out. I can't say I blame him. White calls in someone named Hunter to track and recapture Carl. Hunter is played by... Pam Greer? What are you doing here? This pisses me off. Pam Greer is way too cool to be in this movie. Meanwhile, Carl contacts his wife in a rather unorthodox manner. I'm just kidding. He uses the synthesizer to tell her that he's still alive. Okay, you get the point. This film is hokey. Carl then goes to confront one of the scientists so he can stop the lethal response on his suit. How do I stop the killing, Massey? How do I control it? The suit, Carl. It's the suit. It's the programming in the suit. What the hell are you and my dumb me? Stay away from me, Carl. Don't tell me what I need to know. Don't come any closer, Carl. Don't come any closer. Don't be a fool, Massey. Really? You're gonna shoot at him? I mean, you built the damn thing, so you know he's gonna kill you now. <laughs> Duh. Carl is then reunited with his wife at a church. Oh my god. What happened to you? Get away from me! Please, Carl! God damn it, I love Carl! I don't know who I am! I'm a machine! I, I can't feel! I can't touch! I'm not human! I love you! I mean it. Kind of. An old co-worker of Carl's meets with him in an alley to give Carl a note from his wife. It's a trap! Alright. On the way back to the lab, the ice, or whatever is holding Carl there, starts to crack, which causes the truck to lose control and explode. Hunter takes Carl's wife hostage, and Carl chases them back to the lab. Here we go. Well, well, well. Hello, spaceman. What is this, Goldeneye?
I hope you know what you're doing, pal. Wait a minute, where is he? Uh, Sector G6. Wait a minute, what sector? Sector G6. They then go to Sector G6, which makes a little bit of sense, considering that Pam Greer is pretty fly. Carl traps Hunter in a hallway, and she offers the deal. All I want is out. Fuck white, you can have him. Now I'm gonna go right by you. If I make it, you get the girl. If I don't, I'm gonna take her with me. So well, that sounds reasonable. I hear when someone touches you, you kill. Ah, don't be stupid, Hunter, I'm giving you a chance. What are you doing? Just leave. Here! Wow, that was a low blow, and more than a little stupid. Now he's just gonna kill you. Forget it, spaceman. I've seen you in action. You make such a mess. Don't! Whoa. Like G6, like G6. And she's not even dead? Well, I'm glad Pam Greer died for nothing. Carl then goes to confront White, who has turned himself into another, uh... Cyborg? Vindicator? Is that what those things are called? By the way, how long did that business with Pam Greer take? Five? Maybe ten minutes? Hardly enough time to go through the lengthy procedure to become one of these things. Not to mention, he had nobody to help him. Don't you have to be dead to be a Vindicator or whatever? I mean, this is extraordinarily sloppy. Bullshit. The final fight scene is clumsy and horribly shot. Carl kills White by attaching a hose to his suit and drowning him with an unspecified white fluid. Gross. Apparently Carl also dies because the final scene is set several years later at a museum. A tour group, which includes Carl's wife and child, are looking at the Vindicator suits on display. He was the hero, wasn't he, Mom? Yes, he was, Carl. Yes, he was. That's more than a little morbid. This movie is bad, and there is no way around it. I suppose the idea for the movie is interesting, and the cyborg suit looks okay, but the actual plot, the acting, and the cinematography are awful. I want to label it as a low-budget knockoff of Robocop, as the films share several elements, but I can't. Robocop was released after this one. It is fair to say, however, that it is a retelling of the Frankenstein story, except this one ends with the monster battling another one, making it all the more cheesy. And I must add, being low budget doesn't necessarily mean a film is bad, but it does mean the filmmakers need to be smart with the money they have. Unfortunately, these filmmakers were not. More than half the movie is shot in the dark, and they obviously didn't have the equipment to handle that, so the movie is simply hard to watch at some points. All of the actors are no-names, except for Pam Greer, obviously. But her character is poorly written, and underwritten. She's hardly in this movie. If you are given Pam Greer, you do not waste Pam Greer. I mean, what movie could be so stupid as to give Pam Greer such a lame role? You carjack Malone. I'm not anymore. Are you to know each other? No. No. We are not talking about that movie, and I am not ready to deal with that. Can you shut it off? Yes, I can. And I think it's about time that I did. I don't understand how Carl could have killed those kids. What made him do it?